a divine person and you can know him and you should know him because he's the one that Jesus sent to be with you in the earth Holy Ghost, to worship you. I thank you that you are here, that you're in the earth, and that we can know you and walk with you. I thank you that we're born into your dispensation, that we have the opportunity to live with you and to know you as a person, as a divine being. I thank you that you're quickening people right now within the sound of my voice, here and even online, that great things will begin to happen to them, says the Spirit of the Lord, as they open their ears and understand what the Spirit is saying to them. We thank you for it, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. To know him personally, he must be a person mm -hmm. you get that yes. now most of us will go oh <laughs> well, that's ridiculous no kidding the problem is most people don't know him as a person most people think that he's a force most people think that he's an anointing he might be a gift right mm -hmm. but to know him pers say him, him. Personally, personally he must be a person are you here so we're going to touch on that a little bit today so first Corinthians I'm excited about this already how would you like to know Holy the Holy Ghost as a person yeah well you got to start treating him like a person because most of the body of Christ doesn't they treat him like an entity of some kind of power or force or a feeling you understand mm -hmm. but if they don't treat him like a person then they're gonna, not gonna know him as a person That's right. are you getting this mm -hmm. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12 now concerning spiritual gifts or things pertaining to the spirit now if we're talking about things pertaining to the spirit we must be talking about things pertaining to the Holy Ghost okay. things pertaining to the spirit brethren I would not have you ignorant we know that the scriptures we're not given by the will of men but we're given by the will of the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost was saying I don't want you to be ignorant of what of him now unfortunately most everyone is ignorant now that's not I'm not slamming anybody well it sounds like you're slamming everybody now I said most most everyone is ignorant especially the thing that I'm gonna be talking about today is that the person of the Holy Ghost and that he's an actual person because oh I hope you're hearing me if you knew him as a person you wouldn't be treating him the way that you do and you wouldn't be saying the things about him the way you say them the Holy Ghost is not a power I tell you I have people adamantly angry at me when I say things like this I'll say the whole no he's a power he's the power of the Lord well, I'm, I'm gonna deal with that tonight you understand he is not a power he's not a force he's not an anointing notice I'm saying he he is not an anointing he's not a feeling oh my goodness oh my goodness the Holy Ghost is not a power he's not an anointing he's not a feeling he in fact is a person he's a divine being he is God you understand mm -hmm. now he the Holy Ghost has power he can apply force just like you I'm not a power but I can apply force to things you understand mm -hmm. but I'm not the force no. I'm the one applying the force That's right. he has power he gives and distributes anointings he's not the anointing he distributes anointings he gives gifts a gift of the spirit mm -hmm. when you have a gift of the spirit who's it a gift of the spirit, the spirit who gave the gift the spirit. the spirit gave the gift are you here mm -hmm. later on verse 11 it says he says but all these worketh that one in the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will so he's dividing the gifts to whoever he wills mm -hmm. he's not the gift he's the giver of the gift That's right. he's not a power he has power He's not an anointing he gives anointings you know what bothers me is that most people brother what bothers you most people would acknowledge what I'm saying now but then they drop it at the door and they forget about it for the rest of the time mm -hmm. 
Oh yes, the Holy Ghost, he's not an anointing, he has anointings, blah, blah, blah. But then you go and you look at everything else they're doing and have, and they just drop it. And they start treating him back like he's an anointing again. Mm. He gives anointings. He gives anointings. When he's close to you, you have feelings. People go, oh, the Holy Ghost is a feeling. The Holy Ghost is not a feeling. He's a person, and when he gets close to you or does things around you, you have feelings. He's not the feeling. He's the one, and you're, he's giving feelings because of his presence. Do you understand this? Yes. He's not a power. He's not an anointing. He's not a feeling. He is a person. He's a divine person, but still no less a person. Mm -hmm. Are you getting this? Yeah. Is this exciting? It should be because he's he's the one in the earth today. And if we get to know him, we'll be able to walk with him better in a greater measure. You understand that? All of the attributes of personhood are attributed to the Holy Ghost throughout the scriptures. We have scripture upon scripture upon scripture upon scripture upon scripture attributing the attributes of personhood to the Holy Ghost as a person mm -hmm. well if he's not a person he's anointing he's a feeling he's a power then we're we're then it was a mistake for God to write it that way in his Bible do you understand mm -hmm. because we could surely be confused to consider God the Holy Ghost as a person if he's gonna if he's gonna put in his word in his scriptures all of these attributes that name a person as personhood mm -hmm. am I making sense yes. attributes of personhood thoughts the ability to think and reason what makes a person a person the ability to think and reason make decisions feelings and emotions attributed to the Holy Ghost throughout the scriptures which include love can a power love no, no. a person be di a divine person loves you understand so feelings and emotions including love anger you don't want me to go through all of these I hope <laughs> love anger hope jealousy ever heard of that mm -hmm. pleasure he's pleased by certain things attributed specifically to the Holy Ghost attributes that make a person a person all applied to the Holy Ghost Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30 grieve not the Holy Spirit of God who would that be that's the Holy Ghost he's the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. grieve not can a power be grieved no. no grief is something that's experienced and expressed by a person especially a person who loves love anger hope jealousy pleasure grief thing that makes a person a per speech being able to say things and I don't mean just be a parrot to parrot something I mean to actually say something you're thinking you're communicating mm -hmm. he's communicating his love he's communicating his Well, think about all the scriptures they are all written by him he was able to communicate that to the prophets as he willed mm -hmm. are you here attributes that make a person a person first timothy 4 1 says the spirit speaks expressly who speaks expressly the spirit hear what the holy spirit is saying to the churches who is saying it the holy spirit he was communicating what he wanted said speech attributed to someone who's a person are you getting this and lastly but in my estimation even more importantly is will you have all of those other attributes but then you have the will does the Holy Spirit have a will first Corinthians chapter 12 let's look down at verse 11 but all these worketh that one and the self same right so he's a self he's one he's a self same spirit who were we talking about the Holy Ghost dividing to every man severally as he say he he, he will he has a will he's a he here it says he's 
one and self same spirit so he's an individual that is a he and has a will in your Bible you rightly would be confused to consider the Holy Ghost to be a divine person if he were not a divine person but he is a divine person and you can know him and you should know him because he's the one that Jesus sent to be with you in the earth the Bible calls the Holy Ghost an individual and a he and that he has a will so he's an individual with thoughts feelings emotions speech and a will plus he is God that's even beyond the scope of what I'm I've, I've preached on this over and over again and he is God he's a person he is God and he is God in the earth today a person he's as much a person as Jesus is now that's gonna make the hairs go up on everybody's neck because we can all understand Jesus as a person we can all sort of understand that the father's a person because he's the father of Jesus would have to somehow translate there but the Holy Ghost is as much a person which we can see from the scriptures all of those attributes as much as a person equal with the Father and Jesus and but he's the one that's in the earth today and we've been treating him like a power like an anointing mm -hmm. is this fun yet to know him the Holy Ghost personally to know him the Holy Ghost personally he must be a person he has to be a person he's got to be a person in your understanding you understand he's got to be a person in your doctrine he's got to be person to you say this he, he has, got has got to be, to be a person, a person to, me. to me right mm -hmm. if you want him to respond to you as a person you're gonna to have to treat him like a person and should we not treat him as such if he is a person just give me this if he is a person and all these things that I've been saying are true should he not be treated as a person it's, it just seems so simple to me and to you but there's so many people out there no you should not communicate or talk with the Holy Ghost what did Jesus know him as a person now if you ask me if Jesus knew him as a person and I can prove it from the scriptures that's good enough for me as, as all of these other things that I've been talking about him being attributed as a person throughout the scriptures right mm -hmm. if Jesus said he was a person is that good enough for you it's good enough for me if Jesus said it I'm good are you here yes say if Jesus said it if Jesus said I'm, good. I'm good it's Jesus's will that we receive the one that he sent dr. Ed Dufresne I consider him a father he would often call me son shortly before he left he had a vision he went to heaven and the Lord Jesus talked with him and what he said to him was my people want me but they don't want the one the another that I sent Jesus is people that want him and everywhere you go they want him they want Jesus that but they don't want the another which is the Holy Ghost that he sent and you see that over and over again people rejecting I come with the message the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today you walk with him by saying words they're like oh so he said to dr. Dufresne dr. Ed Dufresne they want me but they don't want the another that I sent well we're correcting that wrong we're taking it up where he left off we're correcting the wrong we're getting people to want the another that Jesus sent and would that be Jesus's will yes, yes. it's Jesus's will that we receive the one that he sent John chapter 13 and verse 20 verily verily I what's the, what color are these letters red. they're red those are Jesus's words verily verily I say unto you he that receives whomsoever I send receives me who did Jesus send the Holy, the Holy Ghost now we as a church or as a people have not received him that Jesus sent fully we've received him in a measure we've received a gift here an anointing there but we've not we've not received him as a person as God in the earth today 
full immersion you know and you talk about baptism you'll be baptized in the Holy Ghost well what do we know about especially Baptists what do we know you don't sprinkle anybody that's not a sufficient baptism no you're fully immersed you go all the way in say go all the way in the way. right we go all the way into the Holy Ghost and what do you mean the Holy Ghost was sent and we're going all the way in all the way in is receiving him as the one Jesus sent as God in the earth today and worshiping him because he's God we've not fully been immersed into him we've not been fully into his full dispensational authority and therefore he's not been able to exercise his full dispensational authority mm -hmm. he's not been allowed which just sounds sad he's not been allowed to be God in the earth today because we've held him back with our religious thinking and our traditional ideas in fact I'm not sure we can do what we're called to do or fulfill what we're called to fulfill without fully receiving him or with having him in a third-rate position mm -hmm. have you ever been in like in a band where you know like I think of like high school bands and whatnot and you have first string second string and third string where's the Holy Ghost in this equation third string well he should be first string correct but he's right now he's in third string he comes after everything else what it is his dispensation he should be first string do you understand it's his dispensation it's his game I know people don't like it this way but I'm putting it out there it needs to be out there and you know let it let it irritate you if it has to but you know you've got to hear it if you don't hear it you won't be able to come to that knowledge mm -hmm. you'll just be stuck in your old belief system and you won't be walking with the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today as a person Reverend Kenneth E Hagan my spiritual dad said we've been swimming around in the shallow end of the spirit for years we've been swimming around in the shallow end of the spirit playing with the spiritual things for years and one of the reasons is we've not fully received him him as a person and if you did know him as a person and you did know him as God what would you do you'd worship him and I'm telling you worshiping the Holy Ghost takes things to a whole new level you're putting the ball back in his court I mean sometimes if I come out and just say the things that I say a lot of people be like eh. it makes them tilt like remember the old you know one of the pinball machines it was too much it was too much force right away but it, so it takes some time you have to you have to kind of coddle it and baby it but we've been babying you for years you understand we've been babying people we've been babying the church for years the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today he's a person he's in the earth and we have to receive him as God if we're going to fulfill what we're called to fulfill now it took us a while to get here you're all right with it but some people it might take them a while to, you know so we'll give them a little bit of slack so it took us a while to get here how do you know how you got here how many times have I said that you got to know how you got well I know how I got here Jesus got me here he sent the another we're talking about did Jesus know the Holy Ghost as a person John chapter 16 verse 7 nevertheless I tell you the truth it's expedient for you or profitable for you that I go away if I go not away the comforter will not come to you notice it says will not he has a will if I go not away the comforter will not come and notice it also that the comforter has a capital C mm -hmm. you capitalize what people's names a proper name the comforter will not come to you but if I depart I will send a power unto you an anointing unto you is that what it says no. is this Jesus talking yes. did Jesus know the Holy Ghost as a person yeah if I go away if I depart I will send him say him him, him unto you now uh, from these verses here from verse 7 to 15 Jesus calls the Holy Ghost he 13 times was Jesus confused or did he know the Holy Ghost as a person Jesus attributed 
the personal pronoun he to the person of the Holy Ghost if I depart I will send him him unto you now did he depart did he send him the Holy Ghost to us yes so he's here he's in the earth he's still a he he didn't transmute on his way down from heaven and come into the earth and turn into an anointing let's just see another example here did Jesus know the Holy Ghost as a person did he treat him as a person yes in fact in Luke 4 he said the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me mm -hmm. he didn't say because he is an anointing mm -hmm. he said he anointed uh, Matthew chapter 12 verse 30 wherefore I say unto you all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men blasphemy now blasphemy means speaking against you understand that mm -hmm. can you blaspheme electricity no. can you blaspheme a power no you have to blaspheme a person right mm -hmm. or slander that's another word that's one we word we use you can't slander electricity you got electricity in those walls here electricity listen to me you're bad you're bad electricity electricity doesn't care all right he's not a power he's a person and it even says it says look at this verse 30 says and whosoever speaks a word against that's what blasphemy is speaking against whosoever speaks a word against the son of man it shall be forgiven him but whosoever speaks against the holy ghost he would jesus wouldn't have said it if it wasn't a big deal Jesus wouldn't have said it if, if the Holy Ghost was just a power because power doesn't care whether you speak against it or not right. you can't blaspheme a power you can't blaspheme a feeling now I find it curious here because Jesus said you can blaspheme me all you want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. blaspheme me a person was Jesus a person mm -hmm. yeah you can blaspheme him he's a person right mm -hmm. you can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost which who where so where was Jesus putting the emphasis on poor in importance if you can blaspheme Jesus and you can get away with it but you can you can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost and get away with it where's where is the stronger in importance it would be the Holy Ghost verily verily I say unto you all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemies wheresoever they shall blaspheme but he that blasphemes against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation because they said he had an evil spirit that was the blaspheme you can't blaspheme electricity you can't blaspheme a power blasphemy only goes towards people it's slander but he is not a power do you understand that? that's my point here the Holy Ghost is not a power say that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is, not is not a power, power what is he he's a person he is God he's in the earth today it's his dispensation we need to ask forgiveness and repent as a people in the earth for treating the one that Jesus sent as if he were just some kind of power or force to be used and not the person that he is the another that Jesus sent start treating him as God fully embracing his personhood listen to me we need to fully embrace his personhood if we're going to fulfill what we're called to fulfill in this day and age which happens to be the dispensation of the Holy Ghost it's his dispensation if we fully embrace him as God in the earth today I can I can feel the resistance if we fully embrace him as God in the earth today what would you do if he's God you would worship him because he's God if we fully embrace him as a divine person who has power well just pray this with me Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I ask your forgiveness, I ask your forgiveness. For, any for any time that I treated you, I treated as, you. A as a power a force, a force. An, anointing, an anointing or a feeling, or a feeling. I, realize I realize that you are God and I intend to fully receive you in your personhood and embrace you 
as God in the earth today that we may fulfill everything that you've called us to fulfill in your dispensation